Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bad Enough Dudes. I got a little bonus episode for you today. I'm kind of excited. I'm kind of pumped. Um, All right, I've been playing a lot of this game, probably more than I should. Um, But I, I, let me tell you guys, I've been enjoying it so much, and I wasn't going to record it, but uh, I've kind of had an exciting turn of events. Uh, But before I explain that to you and what we're looking at here, let's talk about the game in general. It is called Kerbal Space Program, and what it is, I, I, you know, I honestly, I couldn't really tell from the trailers. I saw these cute Muppet dudes, and there was space, and it went on sale for 10 bucks, so I was like, hey, I'll try it out. It is basically a straight-up, like, space program simulator. Um, If we jump back real quick to our space center on the planet Kerbin, which is where the little green Kerbal guys live. Give it just a second. My computer's sadly not the fastest. And this game is pretty taxing. Um, The thing about the game is it's an early access game. It's still in development, and it definitely shows. There's some glitches. um, There's some features that are missing, like there isn't really a game yet it's basically just a giant sandbox right now which is fine let me tell you i've had a ton of fun with that sandbox i don't know if i can recommend it at twenty dollars um i paid 10 for it and that was definitely worth it i don't know it's it's going to be up to you um the game's pretty awesome though there's lots of videos you can see of people launching crafts and stuff so as you can see the the layout of the planets are fairly simple um you know, this space center is the most complicated thing here. Um, that's where we launch our rockets. That's where we build planes. That's where we build uh, spaceships. That doesn't do anything. This is where we track things. That's where you recruit Kerbins to be like Kerbinots or whatever they're called. That doesn't actually really do anything yet, but hey, it's there. Um, eventually, there is going to be more of a career mode, and I'm not sure exactly what that'll look like. Um, but. So you build spaceships in here. Um, I'll show you actually what the ship I'm flying started out as. It is my deep space probe. I've been experimenting with a lot of stuff, and it's really, this game is, it's not 100% totally true to life, but it's pretty close. And, um, this is loading, right? Load. Okay. It wasn't loading. Um, so it's not very forgiving, but that makes it so much more compelling. You know, I blew up on the launch pad a number of times, failed to get into orbit. Gang, the orbit's really hard. Then I got into orbit, and I was like, that's pretty awesome. I wonder if I can get to the moon. Then I crashed into the moon, because I misread my altitude. Um, Totally could have gone into a nice tight orbit around the moon. Um, But, you know, now I'm experimenting with different payloads and how far I can go, and I thought, hey, you know, low mass is a lot easier to get up there. Let's build a little deep space probe and see what I can do with it. So there's a number of stages here. It starts out very big. Um, this big orange thing is about enough to get into orbit, and then it's down to this last narrow thing, which gets it where it needs to go. Um, I'm sure it's a terrible design. Um, people in the comments who play this game, feel free to correct me and improve my spaceship design. But... Um, it has powered two now successful deep space probes. Got them out there. My first one, I had a number of failed attempts to achieve uh, escape velocity from the sun, which was my uh, initial attempt. But now you can see way out here, way beyond even the orbit of Elu, which is basically, it's a dwarf planet. It's equivalent to Pluto. Um is my deep space probe. It is escaping from the sun, although apparently it's coming back. The game gets a little confused once you start doing things like that. Um, Now, I put on all the instruments that are available to me in the parts section, but uh, unfortunately, they don't... there aren't a lot, and they don't do a ton, so I look forward to, like, an expansion of all that stuff. You know, there's more stuff added all the time to this game, 
Um, although they've been working on it literally for years. So, I mean, we'll see where it goes eventually. But what I'm really interested in now is my second deep space probe, which I did not put on an escape trajectory, but instead... Well, I thought maybe I'd get it into an escape trajectory, but maybe I'd see if I could get it past Jewel as well. Um, maybe I could slingshot around Jewel. And, uh, and it turns out... We will jump to it. Not only, this is what I'm really excited about. Not only was I able to get to Joule, which is basically the Kerbin equivalent to Jupiter. And there it is, looking really pretty. But as I was coming in to Joule, I was able to arrange flybys of three of its five moons. You see, here's the moon system. And I missed the outer two. But I got a flyby of Tylo that was pretty close. A flyby of... Uh, Vol that was very, very close. It was only about 50,000 meters away. Took some great screenshots. I'll throw those in uh, at the end of the video after I'm done. And I'm about to have a flyby of the innermost Julian moon, Lath, which is an ocean world. And not only is it an ocean world, it has an atmosphere, um, which extends past the 20,000 meter. If you see the uh, para, oh, what is it? Uh, periapsis. It's a confusing word. That means the lowest point of the orbit, or the closest I'll be to Joule, uh, will be about 20,000 meters, which will actually, I've run this flyby a number of times at a number of different altitudes because it's fun as hell. Um, and uh, anything about 15,000 meters or closer, um, I don't burn up in the atmosphere or anything because the re-entry re physics aren't quite there yet. Um, it's really just an effect at this point, but the air drag is such that I actually lose all of my momentum, even though right now I'm traveling at 2,500 meters per second. All that momentum goes away and I do crash into the planet. 20,000 meters, what I'm headed for now, I will make it past the planet, but I will lose so much momentum that I will plunge <laughs> into Joule. Um, so what I'd like to do is line it up such that I take this periapsis, which is at 12 uh, million meters right now, the Joule periapsis coming out the other end, and I bring that nice and tight. I want to build a tight orbit around Joule, um, which is going to be difficult. It's going to be an eccentric orbit. Um, I've actually, I've just been trying to correct it, and I, and every time I try and correct it, I happen to get an intercept with another moon, and I'm like, well, okay. Um, so I've been trying to build a tighter, um, less eccentric orbit. You can see the, the purple one's mine. Um, and, uh, so this can hopefully help. Although all I've got left at this point is the little ion drive. I'll fire it up right now so you can check it out. Whee! Not going to fire it up for long because I don't want to throw off things. But, uh, you can see ion drives, very, very low thrust but they run basically forever. They run mostly off of electric charge, which I've got solar panels, I've got a generator I can use too if I get too far away from the sun. Um, they also need some xenon gas, so eventually that will get used up, but it's very, very slowly. So yeah, so I've reduced the periapsis now. So what I need to do is turn the ship around um, so that it goes faster and uh, skirts a little further away from the planet. Orbital physics, man, guys. I like, I know how it works now. I know what an apoapsis and a periapsis is. I can't say it, but I know what they are. And how to, it's so neat, you guys. I can't even, oh, it's really neat. Um, like I said, I don't, I, I have put a ton of hours into this. So probably for me, $20 would have been fine. But you, you make your own choices. Um, I do get very excited about this game. So my engine is actually on the front of the ship because that worked better with all the launching stages. So even though this symbol right here on my nav ball, that is the direction of momentum. So that's forward. Um, so I'm facing forward, but I need my engine to be facing forward, which means I need to actually be facing backward. So I'm just going to give the ship a little flip around. And we're going to throttle up oh, a little further. We're going to throttle up ever so slightly, gain just a bit of speed. And I'm going to aim at like 22,000 
meter pass. I think hopefully that'll be enough. There it is. Right on the nose. 22,000. Hopefully that's enough that I'm, I'm almost positive I'll make it past Lathe, but hopefully if that's enough to get me in a nice tight orbit around Jewel, um, which then I can work on correcting. So, let's see what happens. First thing I'm going to do is retract my solar panels, because the only reason I even need them, beyond the generator's enough to run everything, but um, if I want to throttle up the ion drive, the extra power from the solar panels is nice, although they don't provide that much extra power anymore. Um, now that I've gone so far away from the sun, there's the sun way over there. Oh, and speaking of moons, there is, I think that's Tylo, isn't it? Yeah, or Tilo. Yep, I'll have some nice shots of a flyby there, but there you can see it against the sun. God, this game's neat. All right, so we're going to speed up time, because if we were to wait it out, it would be four hours before we got there. But it's really easy to speed up time here. And I'm going to actually go up to a thousand times speed. So hopefully I don't overshoot. We're at a hundred and a thousand. And you'll see Lathe coming around. There it is. Coming around and we're going to be heading towards it really fast. We're up to uh, 3,000 meters per second now. Let's cut the speed down to a hundred times. Let's see passing Jewel. So once we get closer, it's going to start giving me measurements based on lathe instead of... And there it is, that bit of lag. Oh, let's slow this down again. Let's slow it down to one time speed for now, just so I can talk about it. So there's Jewel, the gas giant over there. Here is lathe, one of the moons. There's another one of the moons. That one, I believe, is... Yeah, that should be Val, which I passed. Um... And, uh, yeah, we're going to go through this atmosphere and experience some, some re-entry particle effects, but uh, nothing, nothing really simulated other than drag from the air, um, which will cut our speed down quite a bit. And you see relative... Oh, yeah, so this guy is moving in an orbit directly to us, Lathe is. So our speed now, it's not relative to Joule, it's relative to Lathe, and we're all the way up to seven six thousand or yeah six thousand five hundred meters per second all right anyways let's bump up the speed just a bit five times i think ten times will be fine and we can watch as jewel sets behind lathe and you can see our altitude is dropping significantly i'm going to pump the speed down the camera changed on us Let's bring it down to one time speed. So this is our atmosphere measurement. You can see we're still in the vacuum of space. We're still a good ways up, but our altitude is dropping. And I do, I'm finally going to get a chance as our altitude drops. And look, you can see there are a few land masses in the ocean world. Isn't that neat, guys? Oh, it's so neat. 80,000. We're going to be hitting the atmosphere soon. I've got my accelerometer is not measuring any acceleration due to gravity. I'm still in a vacuum from my barometer. My thermometer says, oh, it's quite cold, but it's getting warmer. And uh, my grav Yoli detector. Oh, here we go. So we are in the atmosphere, which means we're experiencing drag. Nothing should burn up, though. So you see speed is dropping temperature is still pretty cold actually so I guess it's it's not measuring any heat from re-entry um, we've got some barometric pressure we're not in the vacuum I really just want an excuse to use that and unfortunately I was really looking forward to watching the sunset on lathe it's never gonna set never gonna set we're just not in the right trajectory so here we go Oh, we've already passed our periapsis. We see we're gaining altitude again. And we'll be out of the atmosphere shortly. So we just skipped across the atmosphere. Cut a bit of speed. Wasn't that exciting? It was super exciting for me. I don't know about you guys. There's my little craft. Safe to 
pop out the panels again. Although I'm on the dark side, so I don't think they'll be getting much sun at the moment. It does check all that stuff. And the panels automatically rotate into the sun. Oh yeah, so they'll be still be getting sun for a little while. Right, because I'm never going to get a sunset, so. So, if we go back to our map, we'll see... Oh, oh, oh no. I went too close. Hmm. So, Lathe Escape is in... So, it... The way it draws things is a little bit confusing because this line is like relative to Lathe, but then I'll be set up once I'm outside of Lathe's quote unquote sphere of influence, I'll be in an orbit around Joule. Um, so I'll go ahead and speed up until we're out. But I think I think I passed a little too closely. I think I'll have to load my save again. Um, do, 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 do. It'll be a little clearer once we've escaped the sphere of influence. All right. So this is our new orbit around Joule. You can see it's a little narrower than uh, 12 million meters. It is, in fact, <laughs> let's say zero meters. It's about zero meters. Um, I'm essentially falling directly into the planet right now. And, I mean, I could try thrusting. I don't Well, here's what we can do. So you can do this thing called um, a maneuver, add a maneuver, and these are the different directions you could go and you could thrust in potentially. And basically all it does is sort of estimate what you need to do to get where you need to go. So if I wanted to establish an orbit again, there. So that requires 2,000 meters per second um, change in velocity. You can see we were at 3,000, so we've, we've only lost about a third of our momentum from when we started this, but we're going to need to double what we've got now to escape and create an orbit around Joule, and I, I could be wrong. I just don't think the ion drive is up to it. Um, it says f a 48 minute burn. It's totally wrong when it estimates the burns for an ion drive that would actually be more like um probably a four hour burn which i don't know if i even have enough xenon gas for and i'm certainly not gonna leave it running for four hours to get a four hour burn because you can't warp up time when you're in a burn unfortunately um so next best thing always the next best thing, and we'll just delete this maneuver. Uh, eh, 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 eh. Delete. Want to delete. There it is. Um, is uh, Next best thing is to crash. So, anyone want to see what happens when you get too close to Jewel? I know I do. Let's speed this guy up. Whoa, slow down. We are very close now. And you see it is a big planet. There's an atmosphere, although we're not in it yet. Let's speed up again. Yeah, we are losing altitude fast. We are heading right for it. Maybe we'll get to see a sunset on Jewel. I assume we will, since we're going into it. Although maybe we'll hit on the day side. Then we wouldn't. And there's there's Lathe. Lathe, which totally killed our speed and made us die. Here comes the sunset. Oh, The sunsets generally look pretty good in this game. There it goes. Well, that was less spectacular than I was hoping for. All right, so. Oh, we're in the atmosphere. Going to be getting hit by drag. There go the solar panels. 
She is a tumbling. And hey, we're through the re-entry part of the effect. Barometric pressure, 0.2. I don't know what units that is. Can't even tell what's going on now. Hmm. Surface speed is dropping just about to zero. And, but as you can see, we still got a good ways to go before we hit the ground. All right, let's speed up as much as it'll let us. It doesn't let you speed up as much when you're close to the ground. Four times is the most we can do. I can always speed up the video later. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. There's a sort of sunset-y thing going on over there. We're still falling. Falling at four times speed. Very slowly. I guess, you know, it's a light craft. It probably has a fair amount of drag. Hmm. The game's not super pretty. I mean, it uses a lot of low-res textures and cuts corners wherever it can because it's very taxing to do what it does. But there are occasional moments when you're like, oh, just a, a lot of the aesthetics just come from the awe of it. Like the first time I managed to get a rocket out of the atmosphere, it was pretty neat. It was pretty neat, I gotta admit. All right, come on, crash already. Let's beat this up again. Barometric pressure is rising steadily as we get close. Experiencing 0.79 Gs now. I would expect it to be over 1 G. Oh, it is hot though. It is super hot. Oh my. Huh? Huh? Getting close. There's blackness coming up for some reason. I don't know what that is. Just a creeping dark blackness. Oh, I love that we're hitting basically right on the twilight band of the planet. As much to look at as there can be. 500. All right, let's slow it down to one time speed. This is how slow we're actually falling. We are drifting to the surface. Casually drifting. I wonder if we could actually... Oh, no, no. What did you do? Um, uh, something weird is going on. Oh! <laughs> and we're dead. And I can't move the camera. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to load my quick save. Huzzah. And we're back where we started. All right, so I'll keep working on this, try and get uh, the orbit I'm looking for, but I just wanted to take you guys through that experience. I've had a lot of fun with this game. It's Kerbal Space Program. I'll put a link to it um, in the description. It is uh, available on Steam, early access for like $22, $23, something like that. Maybe it's third. I, I don't know. It's it seems like a bit much for an early act. It it's really like a principal thing. It's like ah, you know when Minecraft was early access, it was like ten bucks, and it was a really neat game too. But this game is really neat. It's really super neat, um, even in its early stage. So you know, make the make whatever choice you want to. There's tons of other videos out there. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Like, subscribe if you did, and uh, I'll see you next time. Batting up dudes out!